Hello and welcome once again to Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in downtown Brevard, North Carolina, and I film these at my house. I'm going to do a short one today because we just had our class on the butterfly shawl. So I've started the little itty bitty just started one here. And one of the increases we went over was a backwards loop. Now, Marin in her pattern leaves it expressly vague what an M1 is, a make one that happens many times in the pattern. And I often do a make one right or a make one left that involves lifting strands and you can see videos about that on my website. My assistant, Liz, does a backwards loop. It's kind of like a backwards loop cast on. She just does a little backwards loop as she's knitting and keeps going. And that means putting a loop on the needle on your right needle and you keep going. So I'm gonna show you that in a brief video today and other things to look out for. I think it's one of the easiest increases to do to keep you moving. So let's get to it. All right, so in this pattern, as with many triangle shawls, if I spread this back out again, we are gonna be increasing one stitch in from the edge on either side of this center stitch and one stitch in from the other edge. Other stitch markers are not relevant to us right now. They are to the pattern, but not to this increase we're doing right now. So I'm gonna pick my main color up from behind. I'm gonna go ahead and knit my first stitch. Some people slip this, I'm just gonna knit it. This is, I'm using the Liz method on all of this lately. So I've knit a stitch and now I need to make one. And I've done videos where you can lift this stitch and knit into it. The simplest thing to do, especially if things are tight and weird here, is a backwards loop. So how to make this. I'm gonna show you a big way. You can come, come from, take your right hand and cup it behind the yarn and then you're gonna pivot, you're gonna turn either your whole hand or you can turn just the finger. You wanna make a small loop to get on your needle. Come from behind, get your finger up from behind and under. So my right hand is coming behind the yarn and up, you can almost think about it as coming from the left side. This is how I do it. And then I'm rotating my finger. I'm rotating my finger clockwise. Think about how a second hand moves on a clock. And that gives me a loop that then I can slide my right needle under and put it on, put that loop on my needle. The biggest thing about this is if we went a different way, if we went, say, if we went counterclockwise and stuck it on, we'd have a yarn over. We wouldn't have, it needs to catch. It needs when we flip it, when we, when we grab from around behind and flip it, the yarn, if we take a look at what's going on here, see if I can somewhat demonstrate this. The yarn is crossing over on the side facing me. So the yarn comes from the work and then the loop is, it's going to get caught when I put it on the needle. It's going to get caught, so it's going to make a loop that looks like a twist right under there. Looks like a twist. Doesn't look like a yarn over or something big and gappy. If I went counterclockwise, which even just feels weird for me to do and tried to put it on, you see the difference. If I turn counterclockwise, the yarn going to the ball is underneath the yarn coming from the project, that's not gonna work. So come around from behind, scoop, catch it with your finger, rotate your finger clockwise and put it on the needle. I'm gonna knit to the center. Now, Liz is a continental knitter. So if I get my yarn all set up here, I'm English style is holding it in the right hand like I am right now. Liz is a continental knitter, so let's see what she might do. See if I can communicate this for the continental knitters. I'm gonna get close to that center stitch. 
and I'm going to see how she might do it. Now these other stitch markers that I am going past are not my center stitch markers, so I'm going to ignore them for this row. Oh, yarn's getting caught. All right, let's, I'm coming up on my center stitch marker for continental knitters who pick like this, who have the yarn in this hand. Let's see if I can come up with a good way whoop, to do this. It actually looks like if you're holding your tension like this, again, you want to turn clockwise. You might not even have to come under and grab it. If you've got your yarn set up for continental, you just want to turn your finger in so you can catch that and stick it on. It's doing the same thing as what I showed before. So we pick this, we slide. Whatever hold, finger you're holding tension with, you can just pivot. You can just pivot it in, get your needle around the backside to stick it on but I feel the most comfortable showing English style, which is get your finger underneath, come all the way around from the back underneath, twist clockwise and put it on. All the way around from the underneath, twist over the top of the yarn that's attached to the project, come under, twist towards the right, get it on your needle. I've added a bunch right now. I only wanted to add one. So I'm going to take these others off. The last thing before I'm done with this, I'm going to knit out to the other side. I want to show you how it looks and feels when you knit back across it. And this row that I'm on with my main color will want me to do all these short rows towards the center and I'm going to ignore that for right now. This is just about this backwards loop cast on. So I'm just working my way towards the other side because we increased one stitch in from the edge on either side of the middle stitch. And I'm going to increase again one stitch from the end over here. She says to knit to one stitch before the end. There I am. And now I'm going to increase. Now what the way I'm holding my yarn here in my right hand Twisting this way isn't necessarily going to give me, that's going counterclockwise. I'm gonna let go. I'm gonna put my finger underneath so I can pivot clockwise to the right and put that on. Put your finger back here if you need to, to, be, to keep it from flopping off before you tighten it. Snug it up and knit your last stitch. Now when I turn it around, this is my last stitch. This is my increase right here. You can even see if I pull it out a little bit, it's hanging over nothing. There's no purple right underneath here. So when I'm knitting back, knit my first stitch, might be loose, but that's fine. Going to knit this one, he may, especially if you pull, he may feel a little tight because he's hanging out over nothing. But it is okay, he's easy to knit into, you just kind of shove yourself up under. I'm gonna back up to it again. It's a twist, that's all it is. Instead of twisting the strand underneath here and knitting into it, I just twisted my working yarn and got it on my needle. So I might have to pull it open a little bit to get in there, but then you can knit it just as normal. And if I try to leave that stuff off to the side, I'm gonna slide in to my cable so we can look. Since I started this, all these guys in here, all these little increases, they might look a little gappy, but those are all my backwards loop. There's on either side of the center spine and some of that gappiness will come out with blocking and on either side here. This whole piece so far has been used making only backwards loop increases, except for the beginning when she tells you to do something else. Once it's started, the only thing that I've been using 
on either side of this center stitch going all the way up is backwards loop increases. Like if I pull on it, I can see some stuff down in here that I'm like, that looks a little wonky. I'm not concerned about it. As long as my stitch count is right, I'm gonna keep going and it's going to block out and look beautiful. So again, this was just a quickie to show you about backwards loop. I still have my stuff stuck over here because the rest of this row has a lot of what we call back and forth, a lot of short rows, but just a quickie to show you um, what I consider pretty much the simplest way to increase when in the Papillon pattern, it says to make one. That backwards loop increase is a really nice, not complicated way to increase. It might be a little tight when you come back to it to knit into it, but you can do it. And I think it looks pretty good compared to, I've done other shawls where I've done make one left and make one right on different sides of the shawl. I think they look pretty comparable. And all of Liz's Papillons look beautiful. So if you're looking for an easy way to do an M1 in the Papillon shawl, that's the way that I'd recommend. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing at the very least, giving it a thumbs up and a comment. If you'd like to become a member over here, you can do that for a monthly fee, or you can also do it over on patreon.com slash sundragon. And may your crafting be filled with joy and confidence. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Hi, baby. How we doing? Yeah. How's the paw? We doing okay? Rainy day. <laughs>